Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Bless the name of Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a praise in the house this morning. He is worthy of all of our praise, glory, and adoration. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so amazing to meet the needs of his children and to supply us with everything that, you know, sometimes we, we have wants, uh, and he gives us some of those, doesn't he? But he goes beyond also to supply every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so amazing. And uh, I, I'm going to ask you, if you would, to go with me to the book of Job. And uh, I'm going to begin in the 14th chapter as you go there. Uh, just know that over the last several days, the Lord has been stirring this message in my spirit. And uh, I... Uh, I sometimes wonder if we truly know how frail humanity is. I know that every day for me it shows up in different ways, the frailty of man and the things that happen in our lives and around us that bring us to our knees or should bring us to our knees. And uh, his love for us, even while we were yet sinners, would give us understanding. How, how many know this morning that the word of the Lord says in Matthew chapter 4, I believe it is, is that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. I think sometimes we forget that he is our all sufficiency. And I don't mean just carrying us through the day and we go through the things that we want and desire to do, but he truly is our all sufficiency. And everything that we have need of, he supplies just take a, dip, a great, just take a moment, take a nice deep breath. Do you know by that you know not only are you alive, but the breath that you breathe, he placed there. I think about that sometimes when I ponder how frail human life is. And when you consider this, when God formed man of the dust of the earth, he was nothing more than a claymation of an image that looked like God. See, we were made in the image and the likeness of God. We lacked one thing. The scripture says, then God breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and man became a living soul hallelujah each one of us significantly alike but so dramatically different i don't know if you can comprehend that or not that that just gets in my spirit and causes goosebumps to go all over me because you know what not one fingerprint in this room is the same as mine Not one eyeball has the same iris. They're all different. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us significantly different in his image in order to show forth his glory. Which gives me another set of goosebumps. And I know a lot of people think, well, you're strange. No, the word of the Lord says the four and 20 elders standing around the throne of God are going to sing hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And the words of a song just ring in my spirit. Every time you turn your face, new waves of glory cover. Every time you move your eyes, new waves of worship cover me. 
I can tell you this. Some would think, Jeff, that it would be mighty boring to sit or stand around the throne of God and say, holy, holy, holy. But what I believe <laughs> is if God in his infinite mercy with procreation, every one of us are different. Even twins don't have the same fingerprints. They don't have the same iris. Listen, you say, well, what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm saying this. We were created for his glory. And if the facets of God, the, the, the blessings of God, the richness of his outpouring supersede the sands of the sea, which are the number of the people, let me tell you this, there's some things about God we've yet to learn. There's some things about God he's going to reveal. And there's some things about the presence of God uh, that are going to overwhelm us. And I believe that in these times that we live, we need to be pursuant uh, of every good thing that he has for us. When I look at the word of the Lord and how important man is to him, I, I've considered this, that in the, in, the, in the gospel of John, it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I watched the testimony of a young football player that was going to the championship game. And when they won the game, the, the, the coach was real superstitious. And he had put on his, uh, uh, the sun blockers, you know, the little things they put under their eyes. A lot of people use just black paint. Well, he had Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he had wore those through the whole season of the game. And at the end of the game, he wanted to change it up. And his coach is like, don't you change nothing. He says, I'm telling you this. He says, if we, had long, if we won in long socks one week, he would put them longer the next. Uh, if, if, he, if you wore a certain color that week, he wanted to wear the next color, the same color next week. Nothing changed. And so he says he was on him really hard about changing the scripture that he was going to put under his eye because he wanted to honor God. And so he put John. 316 under his eyes and he says after the game he said he didn't understand why God wanted him to do that but after the game one of the promoters called down to talk to the coach in the locker room and he said 94 million people had googled John 316 during the game as they were talking about his 94 million people googled that scripture because he chose to change it up i'm going to tell you something maybe there's some things god is about to change up in our lives in order that folks begin to take notice what's different about that what's different about him i'm going to believe that god is going to show himself strong and powerful in the lives of people but i i want to show you today that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the lord god wants to cause you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers uh, he wants to pour into you fresh oil uh, so that you can experience a higher and a heightened level of experience in him not just what you've already experienced uh, not just what you've already learned uh, but there is a depth uh, to God that is yet to be revealed in the lives of the people you've heard me say this it's so shallow uh, the word of God is so that the newborn babe in Christ uh, can learn in the shallows and the safety of its edges yet it is so deep that the seasoned scholar can never touch bottom when it comes to understanding the depths of God's word when I look at this scripture, I understand what he is speaking here. Job, one of the oldest writings in the Bible, he begins to say uh, uh, in John, uh, Job chapter 14, uh, beginning in verse 1, this is what he says. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Anybody can testify. I can tell you this, man that is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth. Also as the shadow and, and, and continueth not. I, I can tell you this, uh, that when you understand that our lives are very short, life is but a vapor and then it's gone. I, I was talking with my wife just last night as we were, were mourning the loss of, you know, I remember when David and Joella got married. I remember the heartbreak uh, last night as I got the message that he had passed. Uh, he's a younger man than I. Uh, and I can tell you that as we understand things, life is very, very short. We're not promised tomorrow. 
in this life. I remember the words of my father when his, his after chest compressions, he, every, every, every bone in his chest, uh, every rib, every, the sternum, everything was broken uh, from being revived from chest compressions uh, after a major heart attack. Uh, and when I arrived to his bedside, I, I got in bed with him. I, I was, I, I'm not going to kid you. I was 58 years old and I love my daddy. And I got into bed with him and I put my arm around him and I told him, I'm not ready for you to go. And he rolled up on one shoulder and on an elbow and knowing that he was in a great deal of pain. And he said, son, you of all people should know that we do not have eternal life here. And you know what? I said, I have to agree with you, dad. God knows when it's time. Amen. But there comes another question if we understand that if we're going to live by the word of God and we know that uh, uh, the lifespan of a man is but a vapor and then it's gone. It's considered like a flower and then it's over. It springs forth as a seed uh, and then it blooms and blossoms and then it begins to wilt and fade. I can tell you this, uh, that the natural body uh, is like that, but there is a spiritual body uh, that is uh, possessed by the believer. I'm going to tell you something, uh, that God has a purpose uh, to fulfill in us, uh, and he has promised us not just a a new heaven uh, and a new earth, but he has also promised us uh, a glorified body. Uh, He became the firstborn from the dead uh, that we might have life uh, and that we might have it more than abundantly. So when I understand that God's plan for me uh, is not just here, but it's also on a continuing place uh, because he said in, in the, 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 I believe it's the gospel of John chapter 14, he says, let not your heart be, be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Uh, and if it were not so, I would have told you, behold, I am going to go and prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you into myself that where I am there, you may be also. I, I can get excited about coming to church and I can get excited about experiencing revival in the land uh, and I can get excited uh, uh, about seeing the signs and wonders uh, and the miraculous healings uh, and the deliverances that take place uh, on this side. Uh, But there's something on the inside of me uh, that says, you know what? This is not it. Uh, This is not the the end of all ends. Uh, It's only the beginning. Uh, So when you close your eyes in death, uh, God says that you're going to open up uh, uh, eyes into a sweet morning in the presence of God, where you will live forever and forever and forever, says the Lord. I'm going to tell you this because I think that there's a way that we need to learn how to express ourselves and to live. Go with me, if you would, to 2 Peter chapter 3. In 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, I want you to drop down to about the, 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 the I guess, uh, uh, about the 8th or ninth verse. Be loved, be not ignorant of this one thing. I want to share this with you. 2 Peter chapter 3 down to about the 8th verse. I'll go ahead and read seven. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Do you realize that we are reserved uh, under the presence of God? I don't know if you can even comprehend this, uh, but you have an inheritance uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ that fadeth not away. It's reserved in heaven for you. Nobody can take it away from you. It's yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he knows you, he knows you by name. Uh, and the word of the Lord says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now the same, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the things that you're saying and worried about right now, you need to begin to reflect some different directions. I know that you're, you're concerned about what your government's going to do. I know that you're concerned uh, about what 401ks are going to do. Uh, but can I tell you, you have an inheritance uh, under the king of glory. Uh, I, I can find you a place uh, where that you can understand this, uh, that you're going to walk on streets uh, that are pure gold. Uh, so pure gold that they're transparent like glass. Uh, and the word of the Lord says uh, that he will be the light uh, because there will need no be no sun there nor moon. I, I'm going to tell you that God has a place reserved for us uh, that far exceeds and supersedes uh, anything that you could ever think, hope, or imagine. Uh, I have not seen uh, nor ear heard, neither entered the heart of man uh, the things that God has prepared uh, for them that love him. But the Spirit of the Lord bring you wisdom uh, and revelation of those things. Uh, Let me share this with you. I I, I need to hurry. Uh, Well, this is what the Lord says. But beloved, uh, be not ignorant of this one thing, uh, that the day of the Lord was a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. 
The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, that we should come to repentance. You know, repentance is something a lot of folks don't like to talk about. It's easier just to cover your sin with, don't, don't tell nobody. Don't, don't let it out. But I'm going to tell you this. The quickest thing for you to get an advantage over the devil is say, I did it. God, forgive me. I was wrong. The best way to end an argument is to say, I'm sorry. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So the things that we're holding on to right now, thinking that they are so valuable, trash. They are. The Apostle Paul said, I consider everything that I have gained in life but dung, that I might know Christ. There is nothing that I'm holding on to that can, can cover me or protect me. There's nothing that I'm holding on to that I'm going to be able to take out of this world with me. Because naked I came into this world and naked I shall return. We are the Lord's. Watch this. Everything, when this thing takes place, with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Verse 11 is really where I wanted to get to. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. I don't know about you, but things don't mean that much to me anymore. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation? And the word conversation there literally means lifestyle. The way that we live. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in a holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, uh, according to the promise, uh, and I love this, look for, hallelujah, we, we look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such, a, such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And, and, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is, is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. I, I begin to consider some things uh, concerning Christ and the sufferings that he bore. I, I have said many times, uh, he is worthy of the fruit of his sufferings. You see, he was despised and rejected, and he was smitten of men. He was accounted of nothing, and, and he was given to the death of the cross, and no one took his life, he gave it. And that's important for us to recognize that it was given for you and I. Hear me out on the area of the fruit of his sufferings. Because he lived and because he died, we have life. We are the fruit of his sufferings. The word of the Lord is clear that as we begin to understand the word of the Lord, that we can grow on into certain things. Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. I love this passage of scripture in the, in the word of the Lord. And it's, it's uh, just before... Uh, here, here in chapter 5, and then I'll go down to chapter 6. It says, for when the time was, in verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 and 12. It says, for, for the time you ought to be teachers. It's easy to kind of just kind of coast along, isn't it? 
But when the time comes, he says, you know, it's, it, the time is far spent. The day is at hand. And our cities aren't saved. Does that mean we just go camp out at the church? and what? No, 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 no. I believe that God wants us to begin to do the work of an evangelist. And as I shared earlier, we need to do the work to teach and to minister others. I, I believe if it means sitting on the front porch and allowing revival to break out on the front porch with somebody that doesn't know Jesus. I believe that if it's somebody that is not necessarily like you uh, and you begin to teach and minister to them without even ever saying a word, I I am convinced uh, that every day our life is a hidden treasure, an open book, uh, a living epistle, open and read of all men. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, being the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk uh, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, uh, for he is a babe. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a baby, but let me tell you something. Uh, at 40 years old, we shouldn't be parting the mustache uh, to get the bottle in. Uh, at 40 years old, we need to... Be, I've had people tell me, well, I've been in the way for 45 years, Pastor, and we've never done it like that before. Maybe it's time to get... Get out of the way uh, and let God begin to move like he desires to move. Uh, maybe it's time to put off some of that old dead stick thinking uh, and let God begin to show forth his glory and his power because he desires to do that in this generation. A lot of folks have talked about Generation X and, and, and the millennials, but can I tell you God has a purpose for every generation, uh, and there will be a word uh, spoken through the lives of those as well to bring forth the glory and the power of God. We may not understand it. We may not look at it like others look at it, uh, but can I tell you God has a purpose and a plan. Right. Hallelujah. He's doing it today. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed. But strong meat, strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even by those who reason of use have their senses, their spiritual discernment, their leading and the anointing of God upon their life, those senses. You know, I believe that when we begin to pray and fast, God opens our senses realm in order to be heightened at a high peak to be able to discern those things that are going on around us. That we may speak a word of due season in the lives of those that are hurting and broken. That we may speak a word of encouragement to those that need encouraged. That we release the healing power and the presence of God in an area that maybe somebody else didn't see. The strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even by those who reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the principles, in verses, this verse 1 of, of chapter 6, the Hebrews, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ. Now, I want you to understand, this does not mean canceling them, walking away from them. That's meaning going on up to the next level. This is a way of not saying we're forgetting those things in the doctrines of Christ, which we need to have an operation in our life. But how many know that after you achieve the mastery of a certain level, you need to move on? How many know that once you have reached a certain point in your life, there needs to be a level of maturity past the childhood space? How many have known people in their lifetime where that they may be 50 years old, they may be 60 years old, and are still as childish as childish can be? You see, God wants to bring us into a level of maturity because of the Word of God that lives in us. That we be able to handle things that are around us. Watch what it says. Now, I want you to understand that clearly, that this is not leaving Christ. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection or maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance. How many of you ever been around people that every time they, they sin a, a sin and they, 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 they feel like they, they got to get saved all over again? I've had young people that have experienced that, where that they go somewhere after having been saved and, and filled with the Holy Ghost. They feel like, well, I've sinned, so I, do I need to get saved again? No, you don't get saved again. You repent of your sin and continue in the Spirit of God. How many know that God walks with us, he's in us, and when you forsake him and you mess up, 
You don't have to go, listen, I, it's important that you know this. If you failed a math test in 11th grade, do you go back to first grade? No, you don't. If you fail a test, you don't go back to kindergarten. You turn and you re repent and you ask Christ to forgive you of that sin. As a matter of fact, the Word of God says in 1 John 1, 9, He says, I would that you didn't sin, but if you do sin, you we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. And so, so many people find themselves in that elementary level where that they feel like they need to get saved all over again. And the Scripture says, that we are to let us go on into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of doctrines of baptisms and the laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift uh, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost uh, and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the worlds to come, if they should fall away to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in rain and comes down upon it and brings forth the herbs to meet for the, uh, by whom the, it is dressed, receiving receiveth the blessing of God. But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. But beloved, we are persu persuaded better things of you and things that, are, uh, uh, that accompany salvation through, through, though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love. See, a lot of times people get it in their mind uh, that they're not going to be able to return to the Lord. I've had people weep and cry and say, Pastor, I blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you're walking in the Spirit of God uh, and you're, 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 you're loving, you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Won't let you. No, you can't. <laughs> I've had people pray, go pray for me, I blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You have not. No. Do you even know what it is? Well, not really. Well, then how can you do something you didn't know? Read in the book of Thessalonians, Paul said, I was a blasphemer, but I did it ignorantly. I remember one time I was about seven or eight years old and I tore a page out of the Bible. And I mean, I had such conviction on me. I was worried. I, I wouldn't talk to nobody. I was afraid that I had blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You know, they taught that in the Baptist church. <laughs> and I was afraid. I was scared to death. I'm going to hell. And my older brother, the wisdom that he had, Brother Foster, he says, you ain't going to hell for tearing the... God don't even know that book exists. That's just a little... New Testament. He said, well, I said, I sure does know it's, it's, it's mine. He knows it's mine. And I tore the page out of it. Which page did you tear it out? There was a part in the front, Brother Tommy, that had somebody else's name written in it. And I had gotten it out of the garage sale or something for a dime. And I tore that page out. Because it had somebody else's name on it. And I was worried. And see, you can laugh, but a seven-year-old boy just didn't know. Can I tell you that there's 60-year-old men, because of ignorance of the word, are scared to death where they stand with God? The promise of God. Listen, I believe according to the word of God. I see where that the apostle Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things in my past, nothing in my present, and certainly nothing in my future can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You have not been called to fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It's time we begin to live like that and begin to 
announce uh, to the world and to those that uh, would oppress us uh, that Christ is our Redeemer, uh, not, their, that not their rejection, not their pain, not their disappointments uh, in the church, but what God has said over my life is what I believe. Hallelujah. So let me share this with you. I'm, I'm just going to share this with you because I feel like that God wants us to have an understanding of the times in which we live in. Certainly, He is not slack concerning His promise. And certainly, as we begin to stir up in our pure minds by the way of remembrance the things that have been spoken over us, the word that has been delivered us, that God has a plan for us to be used of Him throughout His glory in order to touch the lives in which we have to do. I'm believing that God is going to begin to stir some things up in the church so that we can express that in the world and make it a difference in the lives and those we have come contact with. That every place that we go, the Holy Ghost begins to flow in the lives of people. I had mentioned to you out of Mark's gospel, chapter four. Now, I want you to see this. Go with me to Matthew chapter four, and I'm going to wrap this up. Have you ever felt tempted? Sure you have. I want you to know that we serve a great high priest that is able to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, that was tempted in all points like as you are tempted, yet without sin. And you have a righteous place to run to in Christ Jesus. Through the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The scripture says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Have you ever been hungry? I know I have. Over the last 45 or 50 days, I find myself standing and just open the refrigerator. Can't have that. I'm not supposed to eat that. Then I close the refrigerator door and I go over the pantry and open the pantry door. Carbs, 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 carbs. Processed, 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 processed. Sugar, 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 sugar. I ain't eating that. I will not eat that. I refuse to eat that. And I turn around and there's an old dry sweet potato laying over there on the counter. I said, aha. So I scrub him off and put him in the microwave for about 10 minutes. And with no sugar and no butter, I just... Peel that guy and eat a root. But it was good. How many know that sometimes if it's sweet to the tongue, it's not really good for you? Really. If it goes in bitter, it's probably good for you. If it's something that's not new, just super tasty... It may not. Listen, the word of God is just like that. I have found sometimes that the word of God is bitter to my lips. Oh, God, do I have to really eat this? Lord, see, a lot of people like sugar coated. I don't. Sugar coated will make you sick. It will make you ill and it could cost you heaven. You sugar coat it and you're not getting the real deal. But Jesus said, oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. And he'll be like honey out of the rock. He will satisfy your soul. And if you've been hungry. Look at what it says. Jesus was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter came to him. He said if, you'll, if, you'll, if you be the son of God. Command that these stones be made bread. I'll let you in on a secret. I have had no pleasant bread. For now over 50, 50 plus days. And when you're hungry, the smell of fresh bread is amazing. We were talking about tronies. Anybody ever eat at tronies? Oh, yes, sir. 
They have some of the best garlic knots bread. It's, oh my gosh. Get you a couple dozen on the way home because you'll eat a dozen on the way. They're only about that big, but they're, they're hand-tied, fresh bread. It's amazing. Listen, he is the bread of life. I need to tell you that. He is the bread of life. You can taste and see that the Lord is good. And in the presence of God, not only will he suffice and meet every need in your life, he'll carry you through those temptations. Watch this. And in, when he would fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, I, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil takes him up into the holy city and, and sets him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall he bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone." And Jesus said, it is written again. Are you catching this? Every, you want to know how to defeat the enemy? You need to know how to get him off your back. It is written. Amen? It is written. No weapon formed against me can prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me shall can be condemned. This is the heritage of the saints of God. It is written. You want to know how to defeat the enemy off of your mind? Begin to renew your mind after the word of the Lord. He says, he whose mind that is stayed in the Lord is kept in perfect peace. You go over in the book of Revelation chapter 19, you'll find out that his name is called the word of God. Hallelujah. You open the word of God, you let the spirit of the Lord begin to lead you, uh, and you let the unction of the Holy Ghost uh, begin to turn that over into your spirit, uh, and no temptation coming you uh, is going to overtake you. As a matter of fact, you can begin to say, delete, 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 and the enemy has to go. You submit yourself to God, you resist the devil, he's got to go. So look at what the scripture says here. So he'll even challenge you to hurt yourself. Jesus said to him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil takes him up into exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things will I give you. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. And I've had a lot of people say, well, you know, the devil really didn't have access or the ability to do that. I says, wait a minute. Who is the prince and the power and the ruler of the air? Where was Satan cast out of? Heaven. Where did he fall to? Earth. So his dominion is here. And if you don't think that he has power here, you're a fool. Look around of how people are distraught and distracted Lives are challenged, marriages destroyed, young people just, just cast away. I'm going to tell you something. We, through the power of the Spirit of God, listen, I believe that when Nicodemus came, there's something really powerful in that, because he said, look, you, you, know, you say, how can a man be born again when he's old? Can he enter into a second time in his mother's womb? He says, listen, the Spirit goes where he listeth. You can't tell where it's coming from and you can't tell where it's going, but you can sense it. On the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, suddenly there was a sound from heaven of a powerful and mighty rushing wind. I'm going to tell you that that rushing wind gives you air superiority uh, over the devil every time uh, so that the word of God uh, alive in your spirit uh, gives you the ability uh, to take authority over every power of the enemy. Jesus said, behold, uh, I beheld Satan fall like lightning uh, from heaven uh, and I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions uh, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. So listen, 
The devil uh, was trying to uh, jump the gun so that he wouldn't have to find out what he was about to deal with. Because I'm going to tell you what Jesus did uh, as he was taking the, uh, the, the, the nails in his hands and his feet, the piercing of his side, uh, the, the, the thorns on his head. The word of the Lord says uh, that he came out of uh, the grave a great victor. He led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead would abide in you, would abide in me, so that we could ask whatsoever we would of the Father. Let me tell you something. The, the, the Word of God was powerful here. He says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, Behold, angels came and ministered to him. I'm going to tell you something. Great power and anointing was broken as Jesus began to walk out the word of God, the plan of God. The, 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 the hierarchy of what God was about to do in the earth would set the hearts of men free. And the scripture said, had the princes of this world known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Had the, you think about that. Had the princes of this world, satanic, demonic oppression, had they known it, had they, had they understood it? Because just like you are fearfully and wonderfully made and every fingerprint is different, every iris is different, he knows the hairs on your head at this very moment. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead abides in you that you may speak the word of God to take authority over the powers of darkness that would try to excel and break down our families he'll bring peace where there is none he'll bring deliverance to the captives the recovering of sight to the blind I think about Luke 4 and 18 all the time where that the the scripture says Jesus was in the temple and they delivered him the book. And he turned to the book of Isaiah and he began to read. And he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The binding up of the brokenhearted. He is to set at liberty them that are, that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord or the day of the Lord. And he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that excites me knowing that the power of God is being fulfilled in my life, in your life, in our lives every day that you get up in the morning. You need to declare the word of the Lord over your body, over your mind, and over your spirit to go forth in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Because he will give you great victory through the power of his spirit. And you too can put the devil on the run. Amen. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a praise. We may be here with brevity, but I believe God wants us to leave a mark Amen. with the power of his spirit that operates in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll do it. I'm going to ask that we stand all across this building. And if the enemy has waged a warfare on you, trying to take your confidence in the Lord, trying to cause you to, to, to stumble and grope in darkness, I need you to know today, be persuaded. Let the conviction of God persuade you that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let the presence of God confirm in you that there is nothing too big for you and him. Because if you've got it, you listen, you don't have to have a bunch of people on your side. You and Jesus are a majority. Yes. Amen. Amen. Remember A.C. Bates, he was talking about how that he come up against some rough characters, moonshiners, and he was preaching revivals in the, the mountains of Virginia. Some of them come and told him he need to clear out. Their wives and their children were getting saved and moving in on their territory making whiskey. 
And he began to threaten. He said, well, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to take more you to come against me, to run me off. Amen. Well, he said, who you got? He said, there's me. There's God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Ghost. So all four of us against you, you're in trouble. <laughs> so the power of God working in your life will give you victory every time. Don't you allow nobody to threaten you. You live according to the word of God. He'll be your protection. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we honor you today and we thank you for the very privilege of being together like this. I ask, Father, that you would renew hearts and renew minds all across this building. And we understand, Father, that the frailty of our human flesh is really no match. But, Lord, through you, the power and the blessing and the word carries us through every obstacle. I thank you, Father, for healing today. I thank you, Father, for just manifesting that healing in your children through the anointing of Almighty God. I know, Lord, that you want us healed. And Father, even as we receive of everything that you have for us, even right now, right where we stand, Lord, we thank you for it. We just lift our arms and we lift our hands and we say, Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you for protection. We thank you for the blessing of God over this nation. And Father, as you lead and order our lives, I ask God that you would just allow our steps to be ordered through you, through the power of your spirit, that you may accomplish in us that which you would have for us. And we give you glory as you minister your grace for help in every situation. And we honor you, Lord, with all of our lives, with everything that we have, with everything that we express. We thank you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.